For this diversity and social justice assignment, we are going to be taking a look at the median personal income of people that were working full-time and year-round in the U.S. We're looking specifically at data that was gathered from the census in 2002, 2011, and 2021. Let's take a look at each of these questions so that you know what we're asking about and the ways that we could calculate these particular requests. The first question here asks, which demographic had the highest median income for the year, the lowest, and was it the same for each year? So in this case, demographic just means a part of the population, and the parts of the population that we're looking at in the, from this chart are the differences between male personal income and female personal income in the U.S. So all we're looking for is each year, we're going to be comparing the males to females and seeing which income is higher. Not surprisingly, and so you look in 2002, the male median income, average income, was about $10,000 higher. In 2011, it was about $12,000 higher. And in 2021, it was about $11,000 higher. So answering the question here, our higher or highest demographic is going to be males. And our lowest demographic in this case is going to be females. And yes, this was the same for each year. They didn't take turns in who was higher and who was lower over time. Moving on to the next question, what we're interested in here is to find the percentages of female median income compared to male median income in the U.S. We can calculate this for each of the different years that have gone by. So let's start with 2002. In the year 2002, we had female income of $30,970 Comparing, and we're comparing that to the male income of $40,000 or $40,507. Now, we're looking for a percentage and to find percentages, we divide our groups. Um, so we're taking the female group and dividing it by the male group to see how they compare. In this case, if you divide these numbers on your calculator, what you're going to get is 0.746 or point, sorry, 0.646. 0.7646, what I'm writing down here. And if we convert this to a percentage, because we want this in percentage form, and anytime we do a calculation, it comes out as a decimal, converting it to a percentage, we can either multiply by 100, which is the same thing as moving our decimal two places to the left. And we can see that female income was 76.46% of male income in the year 2002. Another way that you could think about that is for every 76 cents that a female made, a male would make one full dollar. We're getting only 76% of that income value. Now we're interested in, has this improved over time? Because this is a pretty big gap in, in income. So let's take a look at what happened in 2011. We're going to be doing the same idea here. We're going to take the female income from 2011 up here on our chart, which was 38,685. And divide that by the male outcome of 50,316. And if you divide that on the calculator, the result that you should get here is 0.7688. And converting that to a percentage, that would be 76.88%. So there was some increase here in terms of fixing the, gen the gender gap, but not a lot, right? We went from 76.46 to 76.88. So are we doing better now? Let's look at the 2021 data. In this case, we have $52,959 for the female group divided by $63,743 for the male group. Dividing that on your calculator, we end up with 0.8308 or 83.08%. Again, meaning here, for every dollar that males earn, females would earn 83 cents. We've gotten a pretty good jump going on here, but there's still a lot of work to do. When we look at this, these percentages, we're talking here, these percentages represent the gender gap. Uh, so what's going on in terms of the 
gap between male and female. And here, the biggest gender gap would be back in 2002, with the gender gap closing over time. Our next set of questions is asking us to actually write a linear equation model. This time, we want to do a, a separate equation for males, a separate equation for females. And specifically, we're looking at the years between 2002 and 2011. We want to find the rate of change, which is, of course, part of how you find that equation. And then we want to use our equation to make a prediction. All right, so let's start by figuring out our linear equations. If you remember, a linear, the general form of a linear equation is P equals A plus BN, where A is our starting value and B is the rate of change. So if we want to calculate here, let's suppose that we want to look at our group of males and we want to see the rate of change between 2002 and 2011. What we're going to be doing is we're going to come up here to our chart. We're looking at our male numbers in 2002 was 40,507. And in 2011, our male income was 50,316. If we want to find the rate of change, the rate of change is going to be the difference between those two values, how much it changed over time. In this case, the change was 50,316, which was how much the median income was in 2011. We're going to subtract 40,507, which is the median income of males in 2002. And when we subtract that, what we find is that there was a difference of $9,809 that happened between 2002 and 2011. If we're finding a rate of change, though, we're not interested in how much change happened over this gap of time. We're interested in what's the change per year. So how much time went by here? Well, between 2011, 2011 and 2002, we end up with, if we can subtract those and we find that there's a nine year difference. So to find our rate of change, $9,809 of personal income changed over the course of nine years. And if we divide that, we find that the rate of change was $1,089.89 each year. So that's our first piece of information. That's the rate of change. And that's the B over here in our general equation. So let's write our general equation then. P equals, A is our starting point here. And because we're looking between 2002 and 2011, the starting point would be what's happening in 2002. So we go up here and our A value is going to be the male income in 2002 because that's the oldest value of what we're looking at. So the male income in 2002 was $40,000. So the $40,507. And then we're going to add, because it's growing, the income's increasing over time by $1,089.89 each year. So we're going to be increasing by that. That's the next part of our equation and our B value. And then we're going to times that by N. Now remember, N is the number of years that have gone by. But in this case, because our starting year was 2002, because that's the number we put here, it's going to be number of years since 2002 when we do our calculations. So here's my rate of change, and here's my equation. Now, the last part of the question here asks us, using this model, what do we predict the salary to be in the year 2030? Well, when was 2030 compared to 2002? Because that's what's going to go in our N value here. So if we do 2030 minus 2002, we find that 28 years have gone by. So we can put 28N for N to get the prediction that we're interested in here. So plugging that in there, what we end up with is $40,507. Oh, we'll put that down here. $40,507 plus $1,089.89 times by 28. Plugging that all in into my calculator, I come up with a total of 
972. No, that's way too low. I come up with a value of 71,000. There we go. And 23 is what my predicted uh, value is going to be in 2030. And if you look here, right, we've gone from 40 to 50 to 63. So going by another set of time here, getting up to 2030, we'd be expecting 71,000. Uh, and $23. So this is how we would calculate the males group. The female group is going to be calculated in exactly the same way, only we're going to be using the female numbers. In this, uh, in problem three, we're looking at the difference between 2002 and 2011. So we'll be using these numbers here, the 30,970 and the 38,685. We'll subtract those and divide by nine because that's how many years went by to find the rate of change. And then we can use the rate of change and the female um, salary in 2002 as our starting point and then plug 28 in to get our prediction for 2030. So that's question three, kind of snag that over this way. Question four is asking us to essentially do exactly the same thing, only this time we want to come up with an equation model between 2011 and 2021. So we're trying to see, have, have things changed over time, right? We'll be able to compare the rates a little bit, and then uh, we can see if our prediction maybe should be modified based on what has happened over the years between 2011 and 2021. So to start, we're going to be finding, I'll just do the males group here again, and then you can try the females group because it'll be really similar. What we're looking for in the males group, the first thing we want to do is find the rate of change. But this time we're looking at the values in 2011 and 2021. So coming up here to the chart, the 2011 value is this 50,000 and my 2021 value is this 63,000 number here. So the rate of change is the difference between what happened over that period of time. So we'll do 63,743 minus 50,316. And we're going to divide that by 2011 or 2021 minus 2011, which is what those dates are. If we subtract our salaries here, we had an increase of $13,427 over the course of 10 years. So we want to divide that to get the rate of change per year. And we find that the median personal income was increasing by $1,342 and 70 cents per year for males over that period of time. Now, if we compare that to what was going on between 2002 and 2011, it was growing by 1,089. Now it's growing by 1,342. So salaries have been increasing a little bit more quickly here at this point. Uh, we still want to write our equation. We found the most important part here with the rate of change. So if we go to our general equation, P equals A plus BN. This time, my starting value is going to be the male value of income in 2011 because that's the oldest value here. So my A value is going to be 50,316 plus my rate of change is 1,342.70. That was what we just calculated. Times N. Now, N is going to be our number of years. Since our starting value, which was 2011 this time. So number of years since 2011. So if I want to make the prediction for what's happening in the year 2030, I'm going to have to figure out how many years have gone by from 2030 back to 2011? And if we subtract that, we end up with 19. So to make our prediction for the year 2030, we're going to put 19 in for N in our equation here. So 50,316 plus $1,342.70 per year times 19 years ends up giving me a prediction of 
$75,000 or $75,827 in the year 2030. Now notice our rate of change had increased over this newer period of time. So it's not surprising that our prediction for the year 2030 has also increased over time to reflect that change, that increase in the rate of change. Um, so at this point, to complete through the assignment, basically what you want to do here, go back and find the female equations for each of those and make the predictions. And then you're going to be looking at, instead of just comparing males and females, uh, we're going to be looking at a breakdown of... Uh, of different ethnicities and genders. So you'll be looking at white male, white female, black male, black female, Asian male, Asian female, and Hispanic male and Hispanic female, and figuring out these equations over time for that group. Hope this was helpful. Uh, don't hesitate to hit up with some uh, questions if you have them.